Hello everyone and welcome to another Uncast video. So today I'm making a slightly different video where I've been lucky enough to test out the new Link Station S1 from Link Plus. This is a hybrid 4 bay 3.5 inch HHD and 2 bay NVMe basically turnkey Unraid server. It's got everything you need to set up an Unraid server, you just bring the discs. So let's take the box, put it on the desk and take a deep dive and look at what this product has to offer. Okay, so here's the Link Station box. Let's turn it around the right way. Now the packaging, it's very simple, but also very easy to open. So inside here, we've got the unit. And in the bottom here, there's the box of the accessories, things like the power supply. Okay, so here's the unit itself. And here, this is actually the side here. And the interesting thing about the side of this is if we pull this off, this comes off here. And this, like all of this, is solid metal, which is really nice. Now I'm going to turn this up this way, and we're going to have a look at what we can see here. Okay, so here we've got the CMOS battery and the RAM. Now the installed RAM here is 8 gigs, but it is expandable and in fact we'll probably try expanding the RAM later on. Now a really interesting part is this here. Now this is a metal heatsink and if we remove it, this is where we can put NVMEs. Here's NVMe 1 and NVMe 2. And here we can see we've got thermal pads where we can just peel these off and this will transfer the heat from the NVMEs into this solid metal heatsink. So let's put some NVMEs in this and I've got one here. And what's really nice about this is it's all toolless. Now I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera but this here moves backwards and forwards. So all we have to do to install an NVMe is just to slot it in, pull this back, push down and the NVMe is in. So let's add a second one. Now I really really like this. I love toolless designs, it's just so simple and easy to use. And I think that's really great that they've made it like that. So let's put the heatsink on. So really good design, such a big heat sink to cool those NVMEs, that's really nice. So let's put the side back on and it clips on with magnets. So now let's take a look at the ports on here. So this is probably the back of the unit, but really it doesn't matter which way around you orientate this. So starting at the bottom here, we've got the power jack here. There's two 2.5 gig LAN ports here. HDMI out, USB-C and some other USB ports here. Now if we turn this right around 360 degrees, this is the front of the machine and here's a power button but also which is nice we've got this little door here that gives us access to two 3.2 USB ports, a regular port here and USB-C so that's really nice. We've got our status lights here and at the top here, we've got a little LED screen. Okay, so it looks like this is designed to be orientated in different ways. Because if we have it this way here, you can see here we've also got status lights. So they're the same as what's on the front. Now, personally, I'd have this side always facing, basically because it's got that nice LED screen. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like when it all starts up. Okay, so next, if we pull this here, again this is magnetically held on, this gives us access to four 3.2 inch drive bays. And let's bring these out. And so there we can see the fan at the bottom there, and if I turn it up this way, this will pull the air through across the hard drives keeping them cool. Now I think it would have been nice if 
if here they put some little feet so people could orientate it this way and have the air pulling through. But that's a minor gripe and I don't think it will really make any difference. Okay, so let's grab some hard drives. And again with the trays, it's a toolless design again. I really love that. So all we need to do is pull these out here, pop the hard drive in, and push them together. And that's in straight away. And then just pop each drive in. Actually, you probably can get away with only actually having to open one side. So it's super quick to put in the drives. Okay, so four hard drives installed. So that's all the storage added to the device super quickly. Now, one more thing to show you. Let's turn this around and I'm gonna reopen this flap here. Something I didn't show you earlier is here, this is the Unraid flash drive, which holds Unraid OS. So it's nice that it's really easy to access here, should you ever need to. Okay, so now we need the cardboard box with the accessories in it. Inside we've got the power supply and its power cable, but also we've got the instruction manual. And yes, for those of you who don't like reading instructions, don't throw this away, because inside there, you'll find your Unraid license that comes with the link station. It's on a card and we scratch off an activation key, which we're gonna use later when we set up the NAS after we've booted into Unraid OS. So again, at the back of the unit, obviously this is where we plug in the power supply. The power brick they've given us is 120 watts, very similar to a laptop power supply. So I'm just gonna plug that in now. And let's plug in the LAN cable. As the link station boots, it's going to be given an IP address from our router. And also with that IP address, it will be given the host name tower.local. And we can put any of these into a browser, allowing us to set up Unraid OS and configure the link station. Now, one caveat to using the host name, if you already have an Unraid server on your network, well, that might also be called tower.local. So in that case, you would need to use the IP address. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in an HDMI so we can see the IP address, but also I just want to watch it boot. And after it boots, I'm gonna show you a super easy way without having to plug this into a monitor where we can see the IP address as well. Anyway, let's boot up the link station. Oh, okay, and the little display panel is all lit up. That's pretty cool. But let's have a look at the monitor and watch the link station boot up. Okay, so there's the Link Plus logo. And we're straight into the Unraid boot screen. It's really awesome. Don't have to fiddle around with the BIOS or anything. No selecting which is the default boot order. It literally is just a turnkey solution. Put the hard drives in, plug it in and turn it on. Okay, so there's the link station's IP address that it's been given from my router. So all I need to do is just paste that into my browser and we're going to be straight into Unraid. But before we do, I'm going to show you the panel on the front of the link station. It's pretty cool. It's touch sensitive. So to use it, we can swipe it left to right. Swiping right brings us to system status where we can see some useful info about CPU usage and RAM. Another swipe and we can see disk summary. All my hard drives are reported good. The next screen gives network status where we can see the IP address. So we can type that in if we want to, to get to the Unraid GUI. And one more swipe and we're back to the beginning. Now I think this touch screen display is a really nice touch. Get it? Really nice touch? Anyway, let's carry on and just log in through the browser. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is create a password. And you're going to need this password every time you log into the web UI. So I've set mine. Then next here, we need to redeem our Unraid OS activation by clicking on this button here. Because the link station comes with an Unraid OS license in the actual box and you put your activation code here. Then the wizard will just guide you through activating your server. Then you can set up your storage how you want it and start using the server. And this is how I've got the storage set up on this link station. So the four 3.5 inch drives are set up here as an Unraid array and I've got a usable space of 54 terabytes. Now, if you're wondering why this array 
has only got four terabytes of free space left. That's because I took the disks from elsewhere. As you can see, I didn't mirror my NVMEs. I set them up as two separate pools. One is a dedicated cache and the other one for VMs. Now, before looking at the hardware in the link station, I just want to show you what plugins I've installed. These are pretty much my go-to plugins when setting up a new server. Obviously, community applications. As this server has an Intel CPU with built-in iGPU, I've installed, the, I've installed the Intel GPU top along with the GPU statistics plugin because I want to use hardware transcoding in a Jellyfin container. And as the link station has got fast USB ports on the front of the unit, I've installed unassigned devices in case I ever want to plug in any USB hard drives. Just to keep the server current, I've got the Unraid patch plugin. And lastly, the user scripts plugin here. Okay. So now let's have a look at the hardware. So the motherboard, as we'd expect, it's got a custom Link Plus motherboard here. The CPU is a quad-core CPU, the Intel N97. So the Intel N97 has four cores, four threads, and a max turbo of 3.6 gigs. Its TDP is 12 watts, and the CPU was first seen at the beginning of 2023. Now it says here that the max RAM that this will take is 16 gigs, but this isn't actually true. 32 gigs will actually work, and we'll just check that later on. And the GPU here, now this is a better GPU than in the Intel N100. So this iGPU is going to give us good transcoding performance if you want to use the Link Station as a media server. Now the Link Station comes with 8 gigs of RAM. And you can see here it does say that it's upgradable to 32 gigs of RAM, like I said a moment ago. We'll test that if it does work. Right, so let's move on to the dashboard and I'll show you what I've got running. Okay, so we can see the server's got a small workload on it. The iGPU is currently transcoding. It's transcoding playing back on Jellyfin, an H.265 file, transcoding it down to H.264. And also I've got a Pop! OS VM running here. And to put a bit more stress on the server, I'm going to open Firefox and play back a YouTube video. So the server's handling both tasks simultaneously. So let's check out the CPU load. Well, it's anywhere between 80 and 90% really. So quite a capable little server. Now, as we can see here, the RAM, we're using 67%. I would have liked to have assigned more RAM to this VM as I've only got three gigs assigned here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the server and see if we can run 32 gigs of RAM in the link station. So the tool that's designed is going to make this super easy to change the RAM. All we're going to have to do is just pop off the side, take out the old RAM, and replace it with the 32 gig DIMM, pop the side back on, and then just boot up. Simple as that. Okay, the server's booted back up. Okay, so let's check the RAM. And yep, we've got 32 gigs of usable RAM here. Okay, so the last few tests I'm going to do is I'm going to do some energy efficiency tests. So all the drives are spun up here. CPU not really doing anything at around 10%. And we can see here the power 44 to 47 watts, 43 watts there. So I'd say averaging maybe 45 watts with all the drives spun up and the CPU pretty idle. Now nothing playing back on Jellyfin and this VM's now shut down. Now. One thing I found about this server is I've got the disks set to spin down after 15 minutes to save power. But if I click on spin down and try and spin the disks down, and then let's go and look at the power. Well, you might wonder why really it hasn't changed much. Well, if we go back now, we can see the drives are spinning back up. And the reason for this is the link station here is reading the smart data of the drives which is causing them to spin back up. And the reason it's doing this is because Link Plus has some custom software in to do with the display on the front of the machine which is monitoring the server and displaying the results on that cool little screen. Now hopefully this is something that Link Plus can address but in the meantime there is a workaround that you can do. However doing this workaround will stop that cool display from showing live data. If we go to the flash drive Go to config and go to the go file here. Now if we were to comment out this line here and save the go file and reboot the server, we would then be able to actually spin down the disks. Now I'm not actually going to reboot the server. I'm going to run this script here. 
which will actually stop the process. And now if I come back to the main tab and spin the drives down, the drives now will stay spun down. And if we see how much power the server's using now, well, it's using around kind of 23 to 24 watts. Now, I'm sure this is something that LinkStation will be able to address to actually change their software, and this won't be an issue. But if you have a LinkStation S1 and you wonder why you can't spin the drives down, then if you just comment out that line in the Go file and reboot, then you'll be able to do that. Anyway, everyone, what do you think of the LinkStation S1? Is it something you would like to use for your server? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in another video.